Hi and welcome, I'm Helen Hughes from Mini Water Adventurers and I am your go-to person for swimming lesson ideas. So these lesson ideas are themed in particular and the whole point of this channel is to provide you as swimming teachers many ideas for themed lessons for throughout. These are going to be perfect for parent and toddler classes, preschoolers and also the early stages. There will be different videos for the higher stages, so watch out for those videos too. So in this planner, basically, I use, and I, have, I did actually design this for you as swimming teachers to keep everything together. Um, and you can keep referring back to it uh, uh, throughout the year of what worked and what didn't work, and then uh, using the calendar. It is not dated, so you can start this planner at any point. Um, so even if you're just starting this month and you, you'll be able to write out the lessons and nothing will be. So, so basically the whole of January, uh, if you're starting in January, will not be void because you can just start at any point throughout. I have labelled mine with tabs because I did start at the beginning of the year. Um, and I've also marked the dates in here too. I will do a separate video all on this, so don't worry. So in my planner, what I use is the, uh, the calendar that shows you for the month. So I have highlighted this as being January. And what I do is I go online and I look to see what events there are going on for this month in, uh, in and around the world and I will then make note as to what they are so that that will then give me some ideas uh, as to what I might want to do for that theme that month. I generally do a theme every other week and I change it out every other week. However, pretty much within the seasons, they, they stay within that season. So for instance, it's winter. So I tend to keep in that theme of winter for as long as I possible and go through the different seasons. Here in the UK, it will be World Snow Day, which is quite apt because I thought what a uh, first way to start the, the month would be building a snowman. Um, in here is my themed activity idea sheet, which I use so I can actually write down all my ideas rather than having loads of different notebooks and notepads and writing down on pieces of paper. I get my trusty planner out and I write everything in it. On this actual idea sheet, it has an area for songs, equipment lists, and then activities. My garage is full of different props because when I moved back from America, that's what I decided to do is do a lot more hands-on themed activities based on the information that I learned throughout working with, um, with children in America. I've been teaching, this will be my 31st year of teaching, um, and so uh, um, I have learned a fair, a fair bit over the years. So what I tend to do, I go into my garage and I decide on what different things uh, that I might want to use based on the theme that I have chosen. I write down what the equipment I have and then I then write the activities based on what equipment that I have that is accessible. As I'm writing the different activities down, I can then marry up with the props and then decide whether or not what skill set it's going to be using my lesson planner, which is on the next page, with the core skills down the side and then the activity and then the progression that you want to do if you're wanting to add in some challenges or if you have, um, you know, based on your different classifications of your swimmers and depending on what level you want to do. So you can use that planner. On here as well gives you, you know, space that you can actually write, uh, uh, you know, any keynotes as to uh, if there's anyone in particular that you need to, to remember for. So let's go through the ideas. Welcome to Build a Snowman. So I like to do a, a sort of a story which helps me go through the structure of the lesson. I actually, uh, if you notice on my lesson planners, I do not put any times because I always feel that, um, it, you know, you can go through a lesson and I don't want to be clock watching and the fact is that, uh, you know, oh, I've done five minutes now for this activity or this skill, I will need to move on. And it's not the case, I tend to flow with, uh, with the timing. So I like to use a story because then that helps me in my mind as to what then comes after what based on the skills. 
and I change it up. So it might not necessarily be, um, you know, going from the warm up, go straight into the front crawl. It may actually then uh, 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 practice on blowing bubbles first, or we go for a song first, or uh, I might mix it out with uh, starting uh, um, doing uh, wall crawls or something like that. So I actually mix it up depending on what sort of theme that I'll be doing. So I wrote down my ideas here. Um, and then I'm sure when I go to the pool, it, I might change it up depending on how the children are feeling and actually, you know, uh, seeing what they're enjoying the best. So, starting the story, it's very cold outside and we need to go, what, what do we need to put on? Because it's really cold outside. You've got it, we need to wear a hat, mittens, and let's put a scarf on. So what I'll do is that I place all my equipment out so that uh, I know that they're using different levels of the pool. And because I personally have quite a limited space for the amount of swimmers that I have, I try and use the pool space to the best that I can so that they then uh, are aren't on top of each other and that they're not having to wait their turn too much. So you'll see pictures. I'll put, post these pictures on here as well so you can see. little person here that they're going to decorate first so on their uh, person they're going to swim down and they're going to get their hat first so on the wall I put up this is made out of craft foam um, they I have these templates if you wish to have them it's in a different book so if you want to have that you're more than welcome to purchase that It'll be available at the end of the month um, of where you can uh, where they go and choose so lots of different colors very colourful out on the wall of where they climb up and out practicing their extra skills of climbing up and out and going to collect their hats then they come back and then they can actually then place it on their person they don't have to but it's great because they then have a purpose of when they're coming back um, to where so uh, uh, focusing on their a to b's of going from one place to another they can then focus on their particular area they're coming back to so hat goes on if they want to, they can then swim down and go and get some bubbles. So I have um, I have buckets. I always use different containers for this, uh, so that they are easily uh, accessible for the children to see where they are going to. Because um, we can always then say in the pink bucket, um, go and choose your pom pom for your hat. They can match it if they want to, or they are more than welcome to do a different colour. So they can go off and do a different colour. So then they bring these back, um, either the parents, if you're doing parent and toddler, can hold on to it, or the, the, the children are more than welcome to obviously uh, hold on to it as well. With these pom-poms, they're great because they, uh, you know, they're, they're fantastic. They soak up a little bit of water so they can squeeze and they can, it's an extra sensory input here for them to, to enjoy. Very visual and very tactile as well. So the next thing, what are you going to get next? Oh, our hands get really cold, so let's get some mittens. So also on the wall, there will be mittens. You can, you can have a pair if you want to, depending on how many swimmers that you have at a, at a time. So they can go down again and collect their mittens. We're going to use these a little bit later for extra things as well. But again, they're going to put them and place them down on their person. <laughs> what else do we need? That's right. We need a scarf, oh, to keep ourselves nice and warm. So out I also have the sensory scarves, so they can go down and choose. Sensory scarves are great. Um, I never recommend the children to actually put them round their necks at all, and I don't personally like to have them over their heads or anything either, because when they are wet, they do suck around the person's face. So you can just hold on, they are amazing through the water, you can do some little extra moves of different sort of sensory um, elements in the lesson using your scarves as well. They can, go, they can, they can move onto their backs if they want to and, um, and use the scarf around their bodies to use that input, that touch of their feel of the scarf. They can watch it moving through the water or they can just hold on to it. If they're using a noodle, they can lie, lie this on the noodle and transfer it this way. Then they're going to place it down again by their person. All right. 
So that's the warm up activity for that, which works really nicely. So you've got their gloves and hats and their bubbles. Then what we do, I then do a song. So the song that I have chosen for this is Snowflake Snowflake. It is called an action song. So basically they, when they sing through the song, we will be doing a certain action to keep them moving and learning those additional skills. So here is Snowflake Snowflake and they turn around. So with parent and toddler, they hold onto them and they hold them what I call the pass hold. I have another videos about the different holds so you can always watch those. Snowflake, snowflake, touch the ground. So if they are ready and they have learnt to go down and under the water as a, as a, a submersion, then uh, I recommend that the parents do that at this point, making sure they give them the cues. Again, I have different videos with regards to cues and why using cues and what you can use. So then they can go down and up. The parents, I always recommend to go down and under as well. And then snowflake, snowflake, land on my nose. You can do a little bit of a sprinkle and then beep, beep on their nose, which they love. And then snowflake, snowflake, freeze my toes. So they can lift up their toes and they can either do a little bit of kicking with their toes or they can find where their toes are. Uh, and then snowflake, snowflake in the air. So then they can, um, uh, the parents lift them up in the air or the children can put their hands up in the air and then snowflake, snowflake, tickle you everywhere. So the parents will tickle them and they can have a little bit of a ooh going through. I do the song twice so that they then know what they're doing um, and they can actually then get into the movements even more so. So it's snowing now, the snow is coming down, so they're going to go and collect their snow. They will use their person as they, they go to. So you have two different ways of doing this. You can go on their backs first, um, where they have snowflakes, and these are plastic snowflakes, um, and I've used these for years. I always mention to the parents, just watch out for the sharp edges, please use your common sense, but I always mention it to them. Um, I have never had any issues with regards to using any different type of prop um, because it's education for the parents as well and it's great for the children to use different things. So the snowflakes, uh, at this point they can go on their backs, they can put the snowflakes on their chest or their tummy, they can put them on their heads if they want to, uh, the parents can hold them up and they can pretend to be flittering and floating in the, uh, in the sky with the, uh, with the snowflake. They can talk about the shapes of the snowflake. They can talk about a time as to when they went um, and saw snow. Maybe they went on holiday and saw snow. So it's a great opportunity for them to, to spend their time on their back with the children, um, especially if the children aren't necessarily, uh, and, and they don't enjoy being on their back, that's fine because you can use different tactics in order to, uh, to, to sort of um, distract them uh, that they're not on their back. I call it a Marmite effect is that they either love it or they hate it. You can use different holds in the boat hold of where or a seat of where they're sitting. Um, I always ask them to make sure that they put them in the hold first before they then move them on their backs. But it's a different video on that. So they do their snowflakes, they're going to go around in the circle. There is a song that's relative to Twinkle Twinkle, um, and this is Snowflake, Snowflake in the sky, love to watch you floating by. So I can, you can either sing that as a teacher as they're going round, um, or they can hum it because it's Twinkle Twinkle if they obviously won't know the lyrics to it. Um, but it's still again something nice to use as a song um, as they're going around. I tend to do a couple of circuits round, head up, feet down, and then they can drop their snowflakes off uh, by their person and they can jot it around. Uh, I still give the children, even though they look the same, I still give the children a choice so they can choose which one they want to do as opposed to giving it. Um, if you find that, uh, uh, you know, have a little bit of a difficult child not being able to choose, then just do two, this one or this one, uh, rather than doing a whole massive choice. Um, but again, then it's still snowing, um, so they're going to go and collect their snowballs. So here there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Either they can just go down and collect it if you want to practice on a specific uh, uh, front kicking, they're practicing on their kicks 
and uh, maybe they're adding in some bubble blowing um, so again you can do this a couple of ways I can just focus on going and getting snow so I have pom-poms and I also do have uh, I use ping-pong balls as well and uh, ping-pong balls are great so they can blow them along uh, on top of the water and they can have a little bit of a race to see who can get the uh, snowball back and um, the fastest if they want to do that if they are working independently preschoolers you can do this too they can actually collect their own and then they will blow theirs back making sure that they're a back of, of the noodle um, and you can actually then use an element of surprise of where they will then uh, there are numbers in here and I don't do any more than four for the younger ones because that means they won't be able to hold on so at least it's two in each hand um, and they it's more uh, them able to carry it more so rather than having such a high number so they put their hand in here they choose which one they want to do and say for instance they've got three they will then go and collect three snowballs and when they come back, they are then going to place them on their mittens. So they will place the three snowballs on their mittens and then they can go again because they have two mittens. And then they will choose another number and they then go down and get another two. So make sure you have enough pom-poms. Um, I do have smaller ones as well that can be used. Uh, so if you need a couple more, then I've got the smaller ones as well that you can use that there is lots of them So you might want to do uh, some smaller ones depending on the age of your children and what activity you've chosen to do So it gives them um, something that they can work on their numbers I always think about little extra things that they can learn at the same time in the water um, a, 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 An extra learning opportunity so then because they have collected all their snow, they will then decorate their snowman. So they have a snowman, I then put this out ready for them next to their person so it's already out and you tell them that um, their snowman we need to then, we've built our snowman um, and we're going to decorate it. So what we have out, also what I have out is a, I have some plaque black pom-poms again you can use different sizing I've got two sizes the bigger and the smaller depending on which one you want to use they will then swim down so at this point uh, I then move on to independent swims so either that they're swimming independently on the noodle by themselves or if they are wearing an orca uh, which is in a different video they are then able to swim independently on their own without any uh, uh, any noodles or any kickboards I don't tend to use kickboards at this age anyway um, and they go down and they, they will then uh, practice everything they've done. They're practicing their legs, they're practicing their bubbles, they are practicing movements of their body because that's what we've been working on. Um, with the parents, with the snowballs, they can pretend that, that, you know, that they're rolling or moving different directions and different things like that. So they can also practice their rolls as well if they want to. Um, you can play a little bit of a game of, um, you know, uh, move to your right, move to your left, stop, move forward. You can add in some little games like that. So they're going to go down and collect their, um, their buttons. And then also what I have too are some carrots. Um, these are just polystyrene. Uh, and again, I just say to the parents or say to the children, do not put them in your mouths. They are not real. <laughs> And I try to make a little bit lightheartedness of it rather than being so strict and so stern with them. I just let them know that it's really not a very nice idea. And I'm sure the snowman wouldn't like to have a broken nose when you've picked him up or something, whatever story you like to choose. And they get their carrots and then they bring it back and then they put them on their nose. So potentially they could go three times or at least twice um, to practice their skills. Again, they could climb up and out depending on the space that you've got around your poolside. So there, therefore, they have you have created a whole scene for them, that a whole story and everything. And then that timing wise is coming to the end. After they have decorated their snowman, the last thing that I like to do is their skill sets. So in the in my in the panel at the end. I have an area at the bottom of where the last one is to do with safety skills and safety skills they can pretend to be snowballs where they're jumping in if they want to 
um, and this is the time of where they're learning that if they fall in, where do they go and what are they doing? So we practice on getting in safely, we practice, um, I mean they have done quite a lot of climbing up and out already, um, so you can then add in jumps if they want to, or here they could do some crawls. So some children at this point, they like doing uh, hands on the walls and monkey crawls, but you can call them something else if you want to. Uh, so they can do that at this point. So again, it's still safety schools because they're learning their grip strength. They can do some pushing glides here of where they're pushing um, uh, um, off the wall and pushing towards the parent or the parents and them can do it together. So these, this area, leave the last sort of little bit. If they're wearing an orca at this point, I take the float pad out so that they are then seeing and feeling the difference when they don't have any flotation in at all. So they do not become reliant on the training aid. Um, they actually learn to use it to their best advantage and it works fantastically. Um, for the preschoolers and the stage ones, I, uh, some will do underwaters as well. If they're wanting to do some underwater sort of things um, um, throughout the lesson, that's absolutely fine. We have that. These, uh, um, some of them don't actually sink down, so you can have these. But I also do have some silicone uh, uh, um, towers that I take with me too, or I could also have some dive sticks and the traditional dive. Uh, uh, um, dive sticks or, or hoops that you have that you could use as well just have it there if they are wanting to my particular parent and toddler class they're not even doing any submersions yet so I don't even um, um, do anything like that also what um, I've missed out here as well is that we are uh, uh, helping with the breath control I have a sprinkle toy of where I then have it sprinkling so that if they're wanting to come underneath it then they can do if they're on their backs I then will sprinkle their toes or their tummy or they might they actually put out their hands with their snowflakes and we sprinkle it with the snowflakes if they wanting to go under it together we do the cue of one two three and then they go under um, and generally the preschoolers and older they love doing that too so they will swim through and do a little bit of a, a train action of swimming around in circles to go down under it helps entice them with moving their face down forward and then elevate and moving themselves and propelling themselves forward with that leg kick the theme for uh, for building a snowman and um let's see how it looks <laughs> 